Well, I just got a call from Doug and he's already um, where I'm meant to be picking him up. Um, but, you know, if you believe in coincidences, which I don't, um, he says there's actually quite a, a crash that's happened around about that area. And if I had been on time, you understand, I could have been a part of that. So I am 10 or 15 minutes away due to the fact that I was waiting for him to call me, which he was going to do before he left his place. Um, and so it's what I love about this, it's all just fits beautifully. Uh, because he's already there, he knows I'm safe and on my way, I know that there could be a major delay on the way up, and he knows why there's a major delay, and so everybody's cool. There's no stress other than the fact, you know, we're going to be a little bit later getting home than we thought, but that's not a problem. So sometimes you just have to go with the flow. Um, if he had found me on time, who knows, I could have been in that accident that just happened. So I, I love to think about life that way. It's, um, to me, it's, they're just amazing the things that happen like that, that people don't appreciate. Um, I can always remember a story from my mother, that when she was pregnant with me, and she was about to get on an airplane and actually got on it, and there's something about that plane that she just didn't like the feel of. And she asked to be let off the plane. I don't know if I told you guys about this before, but it caused quite a problem because they um, didn't. They, this is way before the days of, of you know, people planting bombs and doing stuff like that. So, but even so, you understand the security wanted to know why she got on the plane and now wanted to get off, and she just said to them, it, "There's something that doesn't feel right about that plane," and um, they took her to the airport manager to be interviewed because of that. And whilst the airport manager was interviewing her, that plane left the radar screen. It went down and nobody was saved. And which of course made it all the more um, suspicious to them that my mother had got off that plane. But she went through all the um, lie detector tests and everything else that were needed to happen and they realized she just had a premonition and it was absolutely spot on. So sometimes you've got to listen to your gut. Sometimes, you know, you're not being a wuss. You're not being nearly as stupid as you think you are. When you get a strange feeling about somebody, um, there's probably a good reason for that. And maybe it takes two or three years to find out why that happens. And the same thing is when you get a good feeling about somebody and they maybe even do silly things. Um, remember the good feeling because the chances are underneath whatever the BS is, there is a really good human being. And most of us have very big masks on um, to protect ourselves. And I know that for the longest time in my life, I protected my ego um, very severely. Um, I really wanted to keep up appearances. I you know, didn't want people to see me, you know, without my makeup or not properly dressed or, or all those things. Uh, you know, if I entertained, it had to be a five-course meal. Um, oops, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, it, it just wasn't about being me, it was about the show. And then I just decided that was enough of that. I didn't want to do that anymore. It was the way I was brought up, but I, it's not the way I wanted to continue to be. So I changed that and started to be much more authentic. And it was much, much easier. Um, a lot less stressful in, in many, many ways. And I would encourage you uh, to to be that person. Now the only thing is that then when you do that you also find some parts about yourself that you don't necessarily like as much. Uh, because when you're living the lie, you know, you, you're inclined to do things uh, to keep up the appearances that you drop when you stop living the lie. 
And so for me, it's, it's about, you know, Susie Homemaker stuff. I'm really not good at that. And I realized that later. And I really admire people who are. And in fact, I was just looking at, um, I enjoy watching the Home um, and Garden Channel. And I just happened to be watching it as I left. And there was this house that people were actually living in. And, you know, my, my question was, where's their stuff? You know? Because it looked like a show home. And there was no staff anywhere. And I know people can live like that, and I really admire them. Um, <laughs> and try as I might, I don't achieve it. I have too much stuff, no doubt about it. And on that note, I'll speak to you later. Well, so now it's, um, I'm almost probably a couple of blocks away from where I need to pick up Dougie and uh, there has been no traffic jam that he was warning me of. Um, I can't even see at the moment anyway uh, where there's been a traffic accident. So with luck all this worked out just beautifully and I am just 10 minutes late and that 10 minutes could have been a lot worse if I'd been in that accident. So. Wow, isn't that just unbelievably good? I just thought I'd let you know that.